and welcome to another Wednesday night Bible study. Shall we pray? Lord God, we thank you for blessing us to see another year. We thank you for the grace that you daily make available for us. I thank you for all the prayers that have been offered up to you tonight. And I thank you for Mr. Deborah and uh, Christine, and Elder James Thompson Jr., and Minister Douglas, and, and all of those, uh, Elder Rick Norris, and all of those who work to make these uh, things possible. We give you thanks. And now we ask that you will open our eyes as we come to your word and open our understanding. And so we rest in you, we look to you, and we do it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to be talking this month, uh, all of my morning uh, sermons, unless the Lord needs otherwise, and I don't think that that, that is going to happen. But the uh, morning messages on uh, Sunday morning, and also on Wednesday night, we're going to be looking at our goals uh, for uh, for this year, and, uh, and and again, we'll do that uh, throughout the month. And and one of the goals is to prepare your obituary. Hebrews nine twenty seven says that it is appointed unto man, anthropos, it's man, men and women. It is appointed once to die, and after this, the judgment. So everyone is will die, or be, be raptured but you know you can't say, well i'm not gonna worry about an obituary and so on i'm just going to wait for the rapture and i'm go going to be raptured no uh or i'm gonna wait until i get on my sick bed or something like that no the time to do um your your preparation is now we don't know that we're going to see sunday we, we don't know we're living in a dangerous world now a dangerous world and so anytime you get on the road and return home, that's a blessing. You go to a shopping center or even a grocery store and you return home, that is a blessing because of the kind of world that we live in. And, uh, and, and the, the, it, it's, death is, it's difficult to deal with, with the death of someone uh, close to you. And when, when those deaths occur suddenly, you know, without warning, and it, 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 those are extremely difficult to deal with. And, and imagine having to deal with a sudden death and then have to, having to put together a, an obituary and all of these kinds of things. And so, and, and some people will say, oh yeah, well, I don't care what happens to me. You know, you can cremate me, you can bury me out. I don't care what you do with me. I, I won't be here uh, anyway. Yeah, well, you, maybe you don't care, but, but please care about somebody else who cares about you. And think about the people that, you know, that have, have to deal with all of these things. And I found that the most difficult part of uh, my, my wife's program and all those kinds of things was the obituary. I'd never done an obituary before. I've done hundreds of funerals, but I, I never was involved in an obituary. I re we read them all the time. Uh, but uh, when you try to put one together, it, it's... It's not it's not easy and, and because there's just so many things in terms of who preceded whom in death and dates and stuff like that. Uh, getting all of those things together, it, it's difficult. But now, you know, a lot of these dates, you know, a lot of these things. And so write out your obituary. I've written mine out and uh, filed it away, although I expect to be raptured. Paul expected to be raptured also, by the way. In fact, we should all expect to be uh, uh, raptured, uh, 1 John uh, chapter 3. And uh, also Paul, uh, you know, he that loves his, his coming and so on. But anyway, prepare your obituary. And, and I have an, uh, uh, it's, it's an obituary outline. Um, I wanted to have them out last Sunday, but, uh, but anyway, it didn't happen, but the they, 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 the copies were made today, so they definitely will be on the information table on uh, Sunday, and we'll probably uh, put these on uh, online also. Um, I, I, I want to wait a while before putting them online because I may add some things to what I've what I've done. 
and uh, there may be some revision, but now it's it, it's a it's an outline that you, takes you step by step. For example, name, date of birth, place of birth, and names of parents of the deceased, and and then uh, the uh, deceased is the uh, child born to to the union of, of whomever and so on. But everything that you need is here. The basics are, are here. Now you can be creative and you can add things or, or whatever. But but do and you know what? Even your children, even 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 your children, if they're old enough to want certain things to happen. Now you as a parent, uh, you it it shouldn't be difficult for you to make, do an obituary for them. But you know what? It would be good for even you to do one for your children. Uh, because if they should meet with a sudden death, it's going to be very, very difficult to do at that time. And so now, while you are, as it were, clothed in your right mind, uh, take care of this. Uh, do that now. Take take care of that. And um, again, everything you need, you know, it's it's there. And also for a program. And uh, one of the problems that I have with with with, with programs. Um, and, and if you you're making a program, make sure, you know, you check with me before you finalize it to make sure that things are in order. And before you go to uh, to the press with it, I, I go over those. And uh, and what makes a funeral long are, are the remarks. Um, I've had situations where people did remarks longer than I preached. And. Many times I'm put in a situation where I have to cut my eulogy or my message because there's a deadline as to when we're to get to the cemetery. And there have been, I've known situations where there is a, 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 a significant increase in costs because of late arrival and situations where um, because of a late arrival, like on a Saturday, we weren't able to do the burial. We had to wait until Monday uh, to do the burial. So I'm very much conscious of you know the time that we had to get to the cemetery, and uh, and usually I t I time the remarks because I we always have this discussion on remarks. It, you cannot you can't time remarks. You can't time how somebody's going to speak. You can tell them two minutes. You can tell them three minutes. You can tell them five minutes. But it means nothing. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that. It means something. They know that there are some time constraints. But when people get up, they're they're nervous, and and they're not, you know, they're not kind. Of, and if you're nervous, it's, it's a little hard to keep track of time and keep track of what you want to say and so on. And so what happens? And again, I time them. What was supposed to be three minutes, I, I it, the minimum is six minutes. And sometimes as many as 13 minutes, 15 minutes, and in, 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 in a long time ago, it was even 20. I've, I've known situations where it was even 20. And so when you, when you, you got to be careful about the people whom you select to do remarks. And I mean, you should, you should tell them, uh, give them a time and stuff like that, but don't expect them to follow that. And so you can't say, well, this, and you can, you can time songs. This song is going to take three minutes. This song is going to take five minutes. But you can't say Sister X or Brother Y, they're going to take five minutes, or, I mean, three minutes or five minutes, and you time that out. That's not going to work, okay? Uh, like I say, usually the minimum is six minutes, although, although, although they are told two minutes or three minutes. The minimum is six. And the maximum in most cases is, is anywhere from 10 to 15. And so just understand that when you when you're when you're doing these things. And, and, and again, I don't like to be put in a situation where I've got to cut something like uh, and usually I try to save my main point. I try to make the main point, the last point. And uh, I know with Oscar's eulogy and everything flow. Well, I really thank you for your prayers. And sometimes I'll tell you why uh, your prayers were so important uh, with Oscar and also with my wife. I'll, I'll explain that sometimes why that why that was so important uh, because of previous uh, experiences and things like that where I had trouble getting through uh, uh, eulogies or messages. You know, well, I just break it down. 
And uh, and so I, I appreciate I appreciate the prayers. But uh, one of the points that I wanted to make was why um, Jesus paid it all. It was it was Oscar's favorite favorite hymn? You know, there are a number of reasons, number of reasons. why um, that was his favorite hymn, and I wanted to go into the details as to why that was, which would have taken anywhere maybe about ten minutes uh, to uh, to do that, and I'll still do it one of these days. You know, sometimes I'll, I'll I'll do that, but anyway. If you have any questions about the uh, program or the uh, the uh, outline for the obituary, you know, just let me let me know. And I'll be glad to help you with that. Now, another goal is reading through the Bible. And why why read through the Bible? You know, why start in Genesis and go all the way to Revelation? And I've given you a plan where. You can move about, you read the uh, short chapter books first and then the long chapters uh, books. But let the Holy Spirit lead you. I mean, the Holy Spirit may impress upon you to read Jonah, uh, which is, uh, I believe, about four chapters, or Ezekiel, um, or Daniel, or Jeremiah. So, so, you know, just read books as you are led. You don't just have to uh, systematically uh, you know, follow that uh, outline that I've given you. The important thing is that when you do complete a book, you want to write the date, uh, you know, when you complete it, when you completed the book, okay? And, and reading, there's a difference between reading the Bible and studying the Bible. When you read the Bible, I mean, you're looking for things, you're, you're making notes, but then when you study, you go back and, you know, you may look up, you may look up every Hebrew word, uh, and, and on Bible Hub, you can do that. You can get the uh, definitions because on Bible Hub, there's only one lexicon. I have about over 20 different lexicons that I can look at. But uh, you can, with that one strong uh, concordance and lexicon, you can get a, a pretty good idea of things. And with, with regard to verbs, uh, on the information table, there's a, a sheet that gives you the meaning of, of Greek verbs. Uh, Greek verbs are different from English verbs in that English verbs will tell you the, uh, the time of the action, past, present, future. But Greek verbs not only tell you the time of the action, Greek verbs describe the kind of action that's taking place. A present tense, for example, is continuous action in the presence. It's like a way of life. It's like something that you continue to do. You don't just do it one time, you keep doing it. Like act, seek, knock, for example, are translations of present tense Greek verbs. An imperfect tense Greek verb is a continuous action in the past. There's an action, the same as a present tense, but it's in the past and it's continuous. Uh, John, 1, uh, 1, John 1, 1 and 2, for example, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same, verse 2, was in the beginning with God. And the, the verb was, in, in every case there, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an imperfect tense verb, which means continuous action in the, in the past. In the beginning was the word. Continuous action. This means that the word was always there. The word did not have a beginning. The word was always there because the verb is in the, uh, is in the imperfect tense. And, and the word in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The preposition with is very significant. Uh, there are different Greek uh, verbs that are translated with. Uh, there's S-U-N, sun, which means uh, with in the sense of being among a group of people. And then there is P-A-R-A, -A, para, which means by the side. You, you, you're, you're, you're alongside someone, and so you're with them in the sense that you're by their side. And then there is, is, is pras, P-R-A-S, which means uh, with, in this, it's, it has to do with intimacy. It's like a face-to-face -face type of, uh, of, uh, of intimacy, uh, like Moses knew God face-to-face. -face. It's, 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 it's intimacy is the idea. And, and so it's, it's pras, P-R-O is pras, T-O-N, ton, which is the, and then theos, pras ton theos, which means that, they were face to face, which has to do with intimacy. And the fact that the verb is in the imperfect tense 
meaning that this was always going on. This was happening in the past. It wasn't something that started in the past. It was something that was occurring in, in, in the past. Now, and Bible Hub will tell you that those verbs are in the imperfect tense. But Bible Hub will, will not tell you what an imperfect tense means. And so you have to know what that, you have to already know what that means. And again, I've given you, I, I've given you the, the, the uh, tenses of verbs. They're, they're on the information table. And if they're not in, if, and whenever I tell you that something is on the information table and you don't see it, then just let Bro Sister Brazil know and she'll make copies of it and make sure that they get on the uh, information, on the information table. And so I want to read through and, and what, back to uh, Bible reading and Bible study. And so with the Bible study, you would do things like that. You would look, and when I say things like that, I mean you would look at the, 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 the different verbs and the tenses of the verbs and stuff like that. But in your Bible reading, you, you're just reading. You, want to, you just want to know what's there. Uh, we talked about the ministry of the Holy Spirit some time ago. And one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is to bring to our remembrance, to bring to our remembrance uh, things that, that we, have, uh, we have put on file. But you see, if nothing is on file, the Holy Spirit can't bring something to your remembrance that's not on file. It, you know, it has to be it has to be on file. And please don't confuse illumination with revelation. What we have, the Bible is a is a revelation. It is God's revelation. You know, God is revealing himself. You know, he's revealing a number of things. Illumination is the work of the Holy Spirit in causing us to understand that revelation. And so don't say I got a new revelation. It would be better, be better to say I got a, a, a new illumination of the revelation. I mean, this morning I got an illumination of a revelation that I've been reading for, for, for ages. And, and, and God just, uh, and I won't tell you what it is. Uh, I'll probably talk about it Sunday. Uh, but, but again, the Holy Spirit just started bringing scriptures to my mind that, I, that I've read. Uh, and, 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 and again, that's what the Holy Spirit does. But when, when you read the whole Bible, when you read through the Bible, the whole Bible, all of that information is, is you know, it's there. You want it on file. It's like, you might as like a tape, tape recorder. You want to put all this information on the recorder. And what will happen is that the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance things that, that you have read. And you didn't understand them at the time that you were, you, 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 you were reading the Bible. But later on, the Holy Spirit will, uh, you know, bring these things to your remembrance. Uh, Peter said that some of the things that Paul wrote are hard to understand. Peter said that some of the things that Paul wrote are hard to understand. And Paul said to Timothy, consider what I say and the Lord will give you understanding. As you meditate on what I say to you, God will give you understanding of it. And so as we read the scriptures and as we meditate on the scriptures, the Holy Spirit will give us understanding at the right, you know, at the right time. And, and like this morning, I mean, and I do this uh, a, a lot, you know, Brother Johnson used to say all the time, my God is a wow God, <laughs> you, know, he, you know, he does things and he causes me to say, wow, look at that. And, and I do that a lot, is that wow, wow, wow. And, and I was doing that this morning as the Holy Spirit just started bringing scriptures to, to, to my remembrance. And the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. And, um, uh, it was, it was just exciting. It's just so, so exciting. And, you know, whenever I have a question, if I ask God a question, God gives me answers from the scripture. Um, I, the question that I ask uh, is, uh, in fact, I was even thinking about it today, is why is it that some people uh, get healed, like on a, let's say they get healed on a Sunday. They come to an altar call and they get healed. And during the week, they lose their healing. And so they're back at the altar the next Sunday. Why is that? Why is that? And the Holy Spirit just started, gave me about five scriptures that answers that question, why that is. And, and I just may talk about it. I may just talk about that on Sunday. But, and, and that goes for any question I ask God. He, he just brings to my remembrance scriptures that I've read a long time ago. And I didn't see the connection, but all of a sudden I thought, wow, look at this. And, and, it's, and it's so simple. I mean, once you once you see it and once you put them together, it makes sense. And it's so simple. And, and again, I didn't get a revelation. I got illumination of the revelation. 
And that's what the Holy Spirit does. And this is what, that's what the psalmist was, was praying. When he prayed in Psalm uh, 1, uh, 19, verse 18, open my eyes. And then in, in several verses, uh, 27, 34, and on, he says, give me understanding. And what he's asking for is open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from the revelation and open my understanding that I may understand the revelation. In other words, give me illumination. And that's what the Holy Spirit does is he gives us illumination, illumination. He shines light upon the, the, the revelation. And so, uh, again, just be careful about I got a new revelation. No, you got a new illumination of the revelation. OK, and uh, so so to so remember that. And I ask I'm, I'm encouraging you to read through the Bible in a different translation. Now, if you if you don't if you don't feel the Lord is leading you to do Holy Spirit is leading you to do it, then don't if you do what the Lord, the Holy Spirit leads you to do. My my concern is that we read all through the Bible. That's my my concern. And um, I, it, it would be good to uh, read through it in a in a different translation. Right now, I'm in the process of reading through in the New King James Version. It's been a while since I've read through in the New King James Version. Usually, I read different uh, uh, Bibles. Uh, like Ryrie, I'm a, I, I don't know, I probably have, at one time, I probably have 20 different Ryrie study Bibles. And uh, I go through, the, through the, um, the Bible every year in one of those Ryrie study Bibles. And one of the ways for doing it is that sometimes I put a lot of notes in the margin uh, of the uh, Bible. And, and sometimes some are so filled up with notes, I don't have any room to put any more notes. And so by going through in another Ryrie Bible, I have some room for uh, new notes and, and stuff like that. But since I plan to uh, use the New King James uh, more, like there's just some verses that you know, the, the new King James just makes more sense than the old. Like, for example, our memory verse for Sunday, go ye therefore and, and make disciples is what is what Jesus is saying. But you don't get that from the old uh, King James version. Um, and, and same way with um, Philippians chapter four, six and seven. Uh, old King James says, be careful for nothing. I, I, I don't like that the word careful. I don't like I don't like that English word for the Greek. A, a better word, and then I mean it can mean all these things. But when we hear "careful," you you don't think of anxiety. You know, careful. You think of being cautious and stuff like that. But the New King James says, "Be anxious for nothing." And so, in in cases like that, with our memory verses, and even in my preaching, uh, we'll be using I'll be using New King James. But for the most part, it'll be the old. It'll be the old. It's just that when you when we get some words like conversation, for example, let your conversation be whatever well at the time of the writing of the uh old king james conversation meant manner of life and uh i don't think it mean i think it i think that would be an archaic word now in other words a word that's not it's not used um but uh the, the modern translation the new king james says you know instead of saying conversation they will say manner of life which is what what the word means uh, but you you don't want to have to look up, go to a dictionary for every word that you you, you read, and uh, and so with the New King James and also the New Living Translation, uh, they uh, will it will translate in such a way that you don't have to do that. So the main the main uh, translation translation that I will be using this year, the Lord willing, are the AV, which means the Authorized Version, and then the New King James Version, and then the NLT, the New Living Translation. Those are the three that I'll be using mainly. But now there'll be times when I'll use the uh, complete new, uh, uh, Jewish Bible uh, because it it handles there. I can there are at least about three or four passages that it is the only translation that I have in my library that get those patches, passages right. All of the rest of them, they just they don't get them right. Um, anyway. The the uh, complete Jewish Bible. There are at least three that that does an ac accurate translation, and also the New American Standard Version is 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 uh, is is very accurate. Also, in fact, a lot of people use the uh, uh, New American Standard. But you know, I think probably the the most popular translation today in churches uh, is the NIV, the uh, uh, the uh, New International Version. 
And uh, I did a lot of uh, it. The NIV does a lot of interpretive translation. And because there are some things that's not in some manuscripts that, you know, that's considered the best manuscripts, they will they will leave those things out. Uh, like the situation in John chapter eight with the woman accused of, of, of adultery. And uh, and so I, I just don't like it. Um, I, I, there's, there is one passage that that I use whenever I quote Habakkuk chapter three, verses 17 and 18. I, I'm using the NIV, and that's the only verse that I can think of in the NIV uh, that, I, uh, that I quote. And because all the other translations, the NIV does do a better job on Habakkuk chapter 3, 17 and 18 than the other translations. And therefore, uh, when I quote that verse, it, I'm, I'm quoting it from the, from the NIV. Uh, but now all of the translations are reliable. Okay, they're all reliable when it comes to the things that matter most to God. They all are reliable. In fact, I went through like, you must be born again, John chapter 3. <laughs> they all get it right. And uh, they just, and I just made a list of things that are very, that are important. And uh, they all get it right when it comes to those, uh, when it comes to those things. But if you like the NIV, then by all means, uh, use the, uh, you know, use the NIV. And when you are, if, it, and when the ministers are speaking or you're teaching Sunday school, again, um, you, you should try to use the translation that most people are, are going to have, because now with the phones, Whatever translation you use, you know people can turn on it the, on their phone, go to it on their on their phones. But don't ask people to read with you if you're reading one translation and they're reading another one. You, you shouldn't do that. Just tell, just say, well, I'm you know I'm, I'm reading this from from whatever translation. And Matt, Pastor McKeesey did something I that I've never seen anyone do before, and I really like it. Is that he uh, he's aware of the translation that uh, you know that that I use and everything. And he read a passage and he had us to, to repeat after him. And, uh, and and I'm sure that should I use a, a, a different translation other than those three that I mentioned, that's probably what I'll do also is just read it and have you, uh, you know, re repeat after me. I like that. I like that. But for using a, a different translation, but yeah, I mean, you're free to use whatever one you want, even in your teaching. But like I say, you know, let people know that what translation you're using. And in most cases with phones now, they'll be able to turn to it and follow along with you. Uh, but again, don't tell them to turn to whatever passage if the translations are not the same. Okay. And so, but anyway, and I give, I've given you a list and I think <laughs> the NIV is, is the last one on that list of different translations. Okay. And remember what we have a translation, you, you, you don't have, you know, you, you have, you have, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. And probably most of the Aramaic in the Bible is in the book of Daniel. When Daniel uh, was talking about the Gentiles, the Gentile nations and so on, he's, he, he, he wrote in Aramaic. Uh, but uh, most of the book of Daniel is about the Jews. And, and so most of the book of Daniel is in Hebrew. Um, and then there's some Aramaic in the, uh, in the New Testament. And Jesus, Jesus by the way, uh, did not speak Greek. He actually spoke um, Hebrew and, 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 and I believe Aramaic. Uh, but again, what we have are translations and, 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 and so on. But um, you just pray about the, the translation that the Lord would have you go to. But the, 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 for me, with the Rivalry Study Bible, and I and I, I review by the way. I've gotten back to that. To I got away from for, for a while, and that is I I, I have a timer uh, right here on my on my desk lap here. There's a timer, and it's already set for 30 minutes. And and you know what? I'll start it and I'll stop it. And when I get through the 30 minutes, I don't have. It's already set for 30 minutes, so I don't have to ever change it. All I have to do is just stop and start. And what I've gotten back to doing is. Uh, Spend, I spend 30 minutes, I start in Genesis, and, and I just review, uh, uh, especially uh, uh, verses that I want, that I, that I have committed to memory, or I want, to, I want to commit to memory. And wherever I stopped after the 30 minutes, I have a, a marker that I'll, I'll mark 
where I stop so that tomorrow I can start at that point. And then I go to, to the New Testament and I do the same thing. I, I look at all of those verses that uh, in that 30 minute period that I have, uh, you know, marked to commit to memory. And I know my this Bible so well because of these reviews is that a lot of times when I can't remember the chapter in the verse, uh, like Luke, um, where uh, Jesus said, you know, there's two men, there's two persons, and one did not know his master's will, the other one did know his master's will, and the one who knew his master's will, they both were punished for not doing it, but the one who knew his master's will was punished more severely, which, you know, is one of the scriptures that shows that there are de will be degrees of punishment uh, in hell, and of course, the at the uh, bema there will be uh rewards you know different rewards given based upon uh one's works we're not saved by works but we're rewarded by works and the whole purpose of the bema b-e-m-a uh it's uh bema modern i mean erasmic greek there are two ways of pronouncing pronouncing greek uh words and i'll maybe explain to you why that is uh someday but anyway the uh, modern would be Bema, and uh, the uh, Erasmus would be Bema, which is what you would hear mainly in seminaries. And, uh, and that, that, that's in Romans chapter 14. It's, it's also in uh, uh, Second Corinthians, where, where he says, we all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. In fact, judgment seat of Christ is one word. It, judgment seat of Christ um, translates one word, and that is, is, is Bema. That's the word that's translated. And only believers will be at that judgment. And the, the reason that they'll be at that judgment will, will be to determine what their reward is going to be in heaven. Everybody that's at that judgment will either be in heaven or going to heaven. And then in Revelation chapter 20, uh, there is the great white throne judgment. The books will be open and everyone who will be at that judgment will be going to hell. They'll be going to the lake of fire, the final hell. And uh, but the, the lake of fire is, is, is hell, it's forever, uh, but it's going to be more painful for some people than for others. And that's the purpose of the judgment is to determine not who's going to go to hell. It's, it's uh, to determine what everyone those what everyone's reward will be in heaven. And, and this is why the books will be open. And this is why, uh, you know, I could give a message and I probably will someday on reasons why. Uh, it's impossible for one's good to outweigh one's bad. Bad. It's not possible for that to happen. And uh, and and I'll I, I've touched on it a few times uh, when I talk about you know there's a way that seems right, but it it is it is not possible for anyone's good to outweigh their bad when you consider that the books will be open. And and well, let's take the Bible. That that's one of the books that will be open. And and just think, you know, if you put your trust in Jesus Christ, all of your sins are forgiven. Uh, they're removed from you. But if you don't put your trust in Jesus Christ and you're standing at the great white throne, all of these things will be held against you because, the, you know, there's no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 1. On, um, as far as the east is from the west, Psalm 103, verse 12. That's how far God has removed our transgressions from us. But for those uh, who've not had their transgressions forgiven, who've not had their transgressions removed from them. I mean, just take the, the Bible alone. All of the times that uh, you disobeyed the word of God, seek ye first the kingdom, all the days that you didn't do that. Uh, love God with all your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. All the times you didn't do that. And, and I was thinking about, you know, you know, loving God with all of your heart, soul, and mind. And, and I thought about talking about it tonight. And, and uh, you know, just give some thought to um, things that you may love more than you love God without knowing it. And the reason you don't know it is because you're not looking at your behavior. There's a relationship between belief and behavior. And so if you want to know how much, how much do you love God, look at your behavior. Just note your behavior. And are there person, places, or things in your life that you love more than God. And if you want to find out again, you have to look at your behavior to see. I'll stop there because there's a whole sermon right there just on that. And uh, I don't want to preach it now. 
there's a time for all things. <laughs> so there'll be we'll we'll do that at a at another time. But um, so read through the Bible, and I I I gave you an assignment that you're going to read through the Bible, and what what you should do every month is uh, depending upon where you are and whatever you're reading, whatever book you're reading. Uh, but once you complete that book, uh, during that month, you, sh you should read the book of the month, you know, on that list of things. And you, and you can mark that off. You should read that, that, that book. Now, Psalms is the uh, book for, for January, for this month, Psalms, the, the whole book of Psalms. And I ask you to read, you know, with Psalms, don't start with, with Psalm 1. But go to Psalm 119. Start there first. And Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible. It has uh, 176 verses. 176 verses. So it is the longest. It is the longest in, in chapter in the Bible. And so read that. And, and I'm and I the day I I um, I, I finish uh, and and I was marking and I told you to look for the different terms for the word of God, like uh, judgments, uh, word, uh, law, uh, precepts, um, testimonies. They're just the different terms that are used for the word of God. And I ask you to, to, to circle those. It'd probably be better if you circle them. And, and of course, and you should circle them with a um, the same color, whatever color you're going to use to circle it. If you want to do it with, if you could do it with a, plen a pencil with black, uh, with a, just a black uh, pencil. But you, you've got to be careful now about the pencils or pens that you use to mark uh, your Bible, because some of them, it will bleed. And some, some of them, it will smear uh, after maybe a year or two. So you've got to be very, very careful. Now, the, the burls, I found they don't do that except the only place where I get a smear is with the green. I, I did get, after years, the green will sort of, uh, um, will smear a bit. Uh, and, and what you would do with, with the green is instead of just, you know, highlighting the whole word is that underline, just use the green underline. And, and what green, when I, wherever I see a green is, I, I want to know, and usually I'll put in a mar margin that okay this is a this is a uh, english word and i want to know what is the greek the aramaic or the hebrew uh, of this word and what is what is the meaning and i'll put that in in the margin so green alerts me to know that this is a word this is my reading now that this is a word that i want to study i want to come back in my bible study and i want to study this word and i want to put in the margin of the bible you know the meaning or meanings of the hebrew or uh, of the uh, of the Greek, but here's the thing: as I was reading Psalm uh, uh, one nineteen, that verse, you know, I was reading it, and I was looking for and marking. Um, I was marking, um, um, uh, you know, different terms of the Bible, and this is what I noticed. This is just just listen to this. Just listen to this now. I'm I I'm, and I marked all of these. It, I mean, it just jumped out at me. Okay. In Psalm 119, verse, uh, uh, verse 25, revive me, not us. Uh, there is, a, there, there is a, 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 a few passages where the psalmist says revive us. But all of these verses, it was to revive me. And so listen to them now. Uh, revive me according to your word. Psalm 119, verse, verse 25. Revive me in your righteousness. Verse 40. Revive me according to your loving kindness. Verse 88. This is 119 now. Psalm 119. Verse 88. I'm afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Psalm 119. Verse 107, revive me according to your justice. Psalm 119, verse 149, revive me according to your word. Psalm 119, verse 154, revive me according to your justice. Psalm 119, verse 156, 
Revive me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness. Psalm 119, verse 159. Look for God in everything. What do you think God is saying? What do you think God is saying? I mean, what stood out to me is revive me. Let's stop asking God to revive somebody else. Let's ask God to revive us. Start with me. Revive me. And then once we're revived, then we can pray for God to revive somebody else. But let's focus on ourselves. And I mean, this is, this is and I, whatever I say, I like to have at least one text. At least one. And here, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight verses in Psalm 119 where the psalmist says, revive me. Not revive us, but revive me. You know, and uh, for quite some time now, uh, before getting out of bed in the morning, my prayer has been, Father, I love you. Give me grace to love you more. Jesus, I love you. Give me grace to love you more. Holy Spirit, I love you. Give me grace to love you more. And I, I could take off on a sermon right there, uh, but I will stop. I will stop. I'll just, I'll, I'll stop. But anyway, let's pray. Now, we want to continue to pray for revival. Some, but this time, this time around, this year, let's pray that God will revive us individually. And you see, if God revives me and God revives you, then what's going to happen? The church will be revived. And so I'm not asking God to revive New Testament church anymore. No, no. This year is going to be revived me. That's going to be my daily prayer. Show, give me the grace to do the things that I need to do to be revived. And one of the things... You know what? We're, one thing that will revive us is when we obey the great commandment. Matthew 22, verse 37. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your, your mind, all of your strength. In other words, with all that is in you. And because you see, there would be no revivals as long as there are uh, 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 rivals in our, in our hearts. In other words, competitors. In our hearts, there are competitors, things that, that compete with God, things that we really love more than God. And we, and yet again, you won't know that unless you look at your behavior. You, will, you won't know that. And, and I urge you to look at your behavior and see what it is that, that you love more than God. Because I'm sure all of us have something that we love more than God. We think about more than God. We value more than God. And again, the only way you'll know that because these kinds of things are hard to think about. It's hard to believe that, uh, for example, and I'll talk about this one of these, these days, but it, I mean, it was hard for me to believe that there was a time in my life when I loved the Green Bay Packers more than I loved God. I loved the Green Bay, Green Bay Packers more than I loved God. And, uh, and it was my behavior that made that crystal clear to me. And again, I'll talk about that sometime in the future, but all I wanna to say to you is just look at your behavior. You know, to find out there's a, there's a relationship between belief and behavior. And you want to find out what you really, really believe. And if you find, want to find out what you really love. In fact, I was uh, uh, I was going to do a, uh, a message, a series of messages on uh, Matthew 22. You know, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, all your mind and so on. And, and I wanted to show what that look, what does that look like? What does it look like to love God with all that is within you? And it was like the Holy Spirit said unto me. You don't have to, you don't need to get into all that Greek and you don't have to do all that research. Just love God said that love me the way you love the Packers and, and you you'll know what it looks like. Just love me the way you love the Packers. You go to bed with them on your mind, you wake up with them on your mind, you're thinking about them all the time. If they lose, you're going to a depression. <laughs> and uh and so just 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 do that. And you know what? <laughs> I believe, I believe 2014. Or 2015, anyway, the, the championship game with the Seahawks. That was a supernatural loss. You can have supernatural win, but if you look at that, was a supernatural. It was a natural way they lost, they, they lost that game, and I was so upset. I still haven't gotten over it. <laughs> and um, uh, I mean, it was just it was a supernatural loss. It was a supernatural loss, and you know, God has a way of making you want to do what He wants you to do. And I started pleading with God, Lord, I need to be delivered. <laughs> I need to be delivered. Deliver me. I want to be delivered. 
And um, because I, I, I believe they lost that game because of me. I do. I really do. I look for. I do believe. Now you believe whatever you want to believe. I believe they lost it because of me. Because what that game did is it made me want to be delivered. And uh, and so now, uh, in fact, I stopped. I just stopped watching altogether. But uh, uh, because of the new quarterback, you know, I thought, well, I'll, I'll record some game and I'll watch a few. And when I started doing that, they started losing. When I stopped, they started winning. <laughs> and so, okay, I'm, I'm, and listen, I've lost interest now. I'm, I, I'm, I'm fine. I've lost interest. And so it wouldn't surprise me at all because I'm not interested. I'm not watching. It wouldn't surprise me at all if the, if the Green Bay Packers end up in the Super Bowl. It won't surprise me at all. And if I don't watch it, they'll win it. <laughs> if I watch it, they won't. <laughs> and so, uh, I, so anyway, 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 it, it'll breeze. Keep, you know, you keep watching all. I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm just telling, see, I'm an extremist. I have to be careful about what I get interested in, whether it's good or bad, because I'm going to go all the way with it. Yeah, you know, if it's, if it's bad, I'm going all the way with it. If it's good, I'm going all the way with it. And so I have to be very, very, there's some things I will not, I will not play golf because I know what will happen. I won't go fishing because I know what happens, what will happen. So there are a lot of things that I just, I won't do. Because I know that if I become interested in them, I know what will happen. And you can create interest also. You can create interest in things. And uh, and you can become disinterested in things. It's a lot harder. It is a lot harder to become disinterested than it is to become um, become interested. But it, won't, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they end up in the Super Bowl. And if I don't watch it, they'll win it. You know, if I watch, they'll start. And, and hey, if they lose Sunday, I, it's not because I watched. Okay, I don't plan to watch. And so... So anyway, don't put that on me. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I, I encourage you to look at your behavior to see what it is that you, you know, and, and, and Job is a good example of someone who valued God more than anyone or anything else in all the world. I, I can't, there's no better example in the Bible of someone who valued God, who loved God more than anyone or anything in the world when he lost all of his property things when he lost three daughters and seven sons he could say the lord gave and the lord taketh away blessed be the name of the lord and he charged not god or, or sin not with his lips and so on and that is because job when he lost his property when he lost the things when he lost the the, the, the people in his life that he loved most he still had God, and that's what he loved most, and that's what he valued most. And, and as I pointed out in grieving, and, um, uh, uh, you know, I was trying to, I was really looking at this 30-day thing, you know, and the Lord just impressed upon me is that uh, if, 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 if a person, if you love the deceased more than you love me, there's no termination date on the grieving. It'll go on the rest of your life. If you love if you love the deceased more than you love me, but if you love God more than anyone or anything else in all the world, then there's a termination date because you've got God. You, you, what's, you've got, you have the most valuable uh, 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 thing in, that, in the world. And, and so you're not going to lose your mind. You're not going to crack up because you've got God, you see. And, um, well, I'll, I'll stop there. I'll stop there. I'll stop there. Uh, and, and Lord willing, and Sunday, please pray for me. Pray for me. Um, you know, my my problem each week is really not what to say, but what not to say. And you know, I want to. I really. And you know, here's, here's another prayer you can pray for me too, please. Please, as you know, you pray that, that I stay filled, that I stay fresh, and that I stay face to face, which it has to do with intimacy. And some people don't understand that intimacy. So somewhere in the near future, perhaps a part of this uh, series on goals. Is I'll give a message on that. Uh, uh, stay in, 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 in intimate, intimate, intimacy with God to explain that so people will understand what that means, because a lot of people don't, and uh, so I will I will do that. But uh, in addition to those three things, and there are some other things too, but those are the main things because really, when I do those three things, everything else falls in place. Everything, all the other things will fall in place. It, they'll they'll become automatic. But another thing is in Jonah chapter three where God told Jonah, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, rise, go to Nineveh, preach unto it to preaching that I bid you. 
And 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 Jonah just said, yet 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. Now, you know, the Bible is so simple that a lot of people, it insults the intel intelligence of a lot of people. They just, you know, they just can't believe that this that this happened. You know, it, it, this is just too simple. This, this is this is an oversimplification. And I, I'm accused of it all the time, oversimplifying things. So that's an oversimplification. But I just happen to believe that if God said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be destroyed, see, God will anoint his word. God will anoint his word, no matter what it is. If he'll anoint it. And you don't, if you if you preach the preaching that God bids you, you don't have to pray for an anointed. It, it'll be there automatically. What you need to pray is give me the grace to preach the preaching that you bid me. I, and then if I preach the preaching that you bid me, I don't have to ask you to anoint it. It's automatic. And I believe that that's all Jonah said. I don't believe he said any more than that. Yet 40 days and then it should be destroyed. Because that's what God told him to say. God anointed that. God blessed that. God's word will not return turn void. And so you don't have to add anything to it. And it was one of the greatest, if you want to call it awakening, or if you want to call it a revival, whatever you want to call it, it was the greatest in history. And I often went, why, why doesn't this happen again? And you know why it hasn't happened? God hasn't found a man or a woman who will preach the preaching that he, that he bids them. And so that's why I want you to pray for me, that I'll preach the preaching that God bids me. Because so far, there hasn't been a revival like what happened in India, because God hasn't been able to find anyone to preach the preaching that he bids them. You know, they got to add to it and so on. But I, that's what I want. I want to preach the preaching that God bids me and I want to teach the teaching that God bids me. So I'd like you to add that uh, to your, uh, make that the fourth thing on your on the list of three things that you pray for me. And that's, that's what I want to do. Whenever I preach, whenever I teach, I want to just teach the teaching and preach the preaching that God bids me. So that's that's my, that's my request for this year. If you would kindly add that and and, and God answered your prayer. You know, I told you, I asked you to pray that I would read the Bible more than books on the Bible. God answered that prayer. And, and right now I read the Bible more than books on the Bible. And uh, so anyway, all right, let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for our time together tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the richness of your word. And we ask that you would uh, just give us the grace, Lord, to, to spend, increase our time in your, in your word. And, and we have time for what we want to have time for. Men can have time for hours of sports, three hours, think nothing of it, and, and have trouble spending 30 minutes in your word. Oh, give us the grace, Lord, to spend more time in your word and more time in prayer, communion with you. And, and same way with, with, with shopping. Hours can be spent shopping, just shopping, looking at things, not buying into it, just looking at things. And yet we'll say that we don't have time to spend uh, 30 minutes in prayer or 30 minutes in the Bible. So, so give us the grace. And if you don't give us the grace, Lord, we won't change. If you don't give us the grace, we will we'll know what's right, but we won't do it. And so we ask that you would give us the grace to do the things that we need to do. Give us the grace for each of us, not to pray for others to be revived, but to pray for us to be revived. And if, if individually, and, and if individual revival will, will come among us, then the church will be revived. And so grant us all the grace to daily pray for revival, but revival of ourselves and, and, and give us the grace to do that. And I thank you and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Ariani blessing ye varka Adonai ve yishmerika ya e Adonai panav eleka vikonekta yisa Adonai panav eleka ve yasimleka shalom shalom shalom